Tyler, we're going to try something a little different. We've spent plenty of time talking about our concerns with plug power and why we think plug power is an investment that most people should be avoiding. Let's talk about let's talk about a hydrogen company that we think there might be something there and that could over time could be maybe a compelling investment. Yeah, it's it has shown the signs of being a much more profitable business certainly in the shorter term, maybe not the most some would say the most ambitious hydrogen idea, but certainly a much more viable one than some of the other ideas that have been thrown out there so far. We've seen where Stark ambition has gone when it comes to hydrogen, and it hasn't worked out really well for investors for the most part. So let's talk about where maybe that more conservative approach looks like it might be paying off. That stock is Bloom Energy. I'm Jason Hall. This is Investing Unscripted. This video is sponsored by The Motley Fool. If you're looking for even more great stock ideas, we've got a deal for you. Go to our special link. It's fool.com forward slash unscripted. Again, that's fool.com forward slash unscripted. The Motley Fool is going to give you its 10 best stocks to buy right now. Go check out that link. Okay, Tyler, Bloom Energy. What is Bloom Energy? We've mentioned plug power before. We've mentioned, uh, and Bloom Energy is also a hydrogen fuel cell company, but they use two very different types of hydrogen fuel cell technology. Plug power uses what's called a proton exchange membrane. Not to get too deep into the weeds of it, but it is a type of technology that can run at lower temperatures and can be put in a much more compact sort of container to, to maybe to be used in smaller scale applications like for plug power forklifts or I don't know, airport, all the trolleys that we see driving around airports and things like that. Just not large scale things. Bloom Energy, on the other hand, uses, I believe it's Bloom and a couple others. They have looked into more of a solid oxide hydrogen fuel cell. Solid oxide is a, it's a slightly more efficient system. However, it runs really hot and it has to be much, much bigger. And so it needs like a lot more kind of space to breathe and a lot more ventilation and things like that. Sometimes these things can get up to six, seven, 800 degrees. And it's not exactly something that you can have running around on the roads that hot, right? So certainly you wouldn't want it strapped to the back of the seat on your forklift that you're riding around inside of an Amazon warehouse. Yeah. Unless it's below freezing one, might keep your buns toasty. So the idea here is that because it's a much, much larger system, it's a much, it's more efficient, but it's considerably bigger. It doesn't have as many of the use cases that people would portend a proton exchange membrane to use, but it does have its own viable purposes. For example, a very common use for solid oxide fuel cells is backup and emergency power. Instead of having a diesel generator when the power goes out, you have hydrogen fuel cells. One of the more popular places to use a hydrogen fuel cell for a backup power is something like a data center, where it is extremely important that you keep all of the cloud computing devices or data storage and memory up and running at any given moment that you can have zero downtime from power outages. And so when you have backup power, it's extremely valuable to have, even though if the cost of electricity might be a little bit higher. And so that gives you an example of where this particular technology actually works and is viable compared to some of the other offerings in the market. We're also starting to see increased interest for decarbonization. You mentioned remote power and for power backup is an alternative to diesel generators or natural gas generators. There's a little bit of the benefit there of in those remote locations where maybe you don't have the infrastructure to pipe natural gas in to run a natural gas generator. But we're seeing more and more companies and regulatory bodies putting pressure to reduce particulates from diesel, for example, and also greenhouse gases that we know cause global warming. And we're getting to a point where hydrogen, of course, the dirty secret of hydrogen, it's not really a secret to anybody that follows the industries that most of it is produced from steam reforming, right? So you're taking natural gas and you're cracking it and separating out the hydrogen from the hydrocarbon molecule. And you're left with the carbon, right? So you're creating CO2 emissions by creating the hydrogen. But what we've seen, Tyler, over the past decade, the cost of wind and solar, producing electricity from wind and solar, has come down significantly. Whether those costs are going to continue to fall remains to be seen. But we're at a point now where you can use Bloom Energy's systems to take electricity from renewables and use electrolyzers to generate hydrogen from water. So you reduce the emissions impact and at costs that are far more competitive with producing hydrogen from fossil fuels. Yeah, it's it's still like 
on average, if you were to say it throughout a 24 hour cycle, it's still a little bit more expensive. Electricity market's funny because sometimes prices go negative. If it's a really sunny, windy day out there and solar and wind are just cranking energy out, you, you can actually see utility prices go negative for a little while because you have to like shut down the power of the gas plants or the coal plants have to start winding down. That's where hydrogen can come in because it can act as that storage mechanism. And this kind of gives an idea of where Bloom really fits into the puzzle here. It can act as that buffer when electricity is unusually cheap to become an energy store mechanism, not too dissimilar from lithium ion batteries. We've been talking about battery storage. Somebody that we happen to know on this video channel has a battery backup storage in their house. You combine those two things together and also Bloom Energy is talking about using marine. So shipping, trying to replace bunker fuel and diesel in big container ships with hydrogen fuel cells. As a possible option, I think that's a little bit more speculative, certainly compared to a lot of the other options out there. But it goes to show what is viable here. Certainly a, a smaller market than replacing all vehicles on the road with hydrogen fuel cells. But there is a business here. And what certainly makes Bloom a little bit more compelling compared to a plug power or some of the other even smaller hydrogen players here is that there is some semblance of profitability. And actually, even in the fourth quarter of this past year, it had a net profitable quarter on a gap basis. Typically, a lot of these businesses like to throw a whole bunch of adjustments at you to say, hey, on an adjusted EBITDA pro forma basis, we're profitable. But even if we're to use the most stringent accounting principles that we have under GAAP, we actually had a profitable quarter. So it actually shows that there's a viable business here, could potentially make money. This has got a lot of the adjusted stuff in it, but you can see the business does generate positive margins. And like you said, this is the adjusted earnings per share but did generate a, a gap earnings per share as well. The key thing is that this business does generate positive margins. I want to compare it to Plug Power. Bloom, one thing I think it's worth noting that Bloom's actually a larger business than Plug Power, generates more revenue. Bloom sells more stuff. And this is really important. Gross margin, this is the dollars that are left over after you sell stuff to start paying your operating expenses. They actually generate gross margin dollars. And we've seen with Plug Power, and this is something I've highlighted over and over, Tyler, is that Plug Power, even as its revenues have grown, its gross profit dollars have gotten worse. In other words, its costs have scaled the wrong way. It has continued to consume more and more cash. Bloom Energy has also continued to consume cash as it has scaled, but at a much lower rate. Again, this is a much larger business and it's consuming cash at a lower rate. And we can see a clear decelerization and a reverse in that cash burn. You'd say the same for Plug, but one of these two companies had to include a going concern notice. They had gotten so upside down on their balance sheet. Of course, since then, they've removed it, not by improving their operations. They've removed it by selling a bunch more stock. Bloom Energy seems to be a much more well-run, more conservatively managed business. Yeah, it looks like a business that's in the business of making money, selling a product. And that's certainly a lot more that can be said about plug power at this moment. Whether or not this is a sustainably profitable business is yet to be seen. This is, it has recently turned profitable. We'll see if that continues. I think there's a possibility that we'll still see quarters and years ahead where we'll see negative profitability or posting losses because it's, again, it's a energy is a tough business, regardless if it's a new technology or not. And because of that, certainly something I want to watch a lot more than watching whatever plug power to do it. Yeah, I will say this bluntly. If you're interested in plug power, it's probably because you're interested in the future of hydrogen. I would say shift that interest away from plug power and shift it over to Bloom Energy. Not only is it consistently more well run and the numbers are obvious there, but it's a bigger player in this space. It's also a cheaper stock. So you can get a better value, even though the stock price might not be lower than the dollar stock price for plug power on a valuation basis. Guess what? Bloom is the cheaper stock. It's cheaper, it's better, and it's far better run as a business.